tons of seconds. So, have you recovered? You know, Olympic trials, that sort of thing. Like, such the focus for everybody. How are you doing with that? And, yeah, it was uh, it was tough to deal with. I didn't really do any media stuff after, and I was just kind of like just really genuinely bummed out for, for a while. Um, so it's been kind of tough to like regroup and uh, just kind of get. I, I think the team in general just kind of has hit a wall a little bit, and it, it was it was tough for sure. And like you put so much stock, it's like you put so much stock into this this big one thing that comes every four years that's kind of going to make or break your kind of self-image for a while. Because um, you got to wait another four years for another, yeah, another shot. I mean, it sucks, right? I mean. Oh, it sucks. Yeah, it just sucks. So, but, it, but it's hard, you know, right? It, like, you go through and you start making a list of every phenomenal athlete, every high athlete person who didn't even make it out of the prelim or didn't even make it out of the semifinal to the final or didn't make the team. I mean, you put together a pretty impressive list of, that could look like an Olympic roster, you know what I mean? Right. So, you kind of got to remind yourself that, yes, we're we're trying out for the hardest Olympic team to make in track and field, and it's not always going to go exactly the way they want it to. Um, so, you kind of got to reframe things and kind of get back on the horse. It was good to go race Edmonton and kind of like blow on out. Uh, not really sure what we're going to do after this. Uh, I think I think a lot of uh, the rest of the season is going to depend on how tomorrow goes and how I'm feeling in a week or so. But uh, there's a chance we might shut it down. There's a chance we might shut it down. How's the rest of the group doing? I mean, Danny kind of took some responsibility for yeah. his morale sort of on the uptick. Or it's, we're we're on the uptick. I think I think we're gonna kind of like make amends with it and kind of move on and kind of try to have a strong 2017. It's tough, you know. Um, I think you look at the positives, and the positives are that we did a lot right, and we, we signed a great class, and we um, are being held to the same standard as some of these other like really well funded, right. really deep talented, really high roster with a lot of resources and assistant coaches and calling. And like the reality of it is that if you if you just compare like the accolades of, of people coming out of college or uh, look at the budget, if that was public, you know, or just look at like staff. I mean, it's just Danny. Danny's doing everything. He has a lot on his plate. Um, so it's really tough to kind of look at it and kind of. But it, it, it's good that we're being held to the same standard. Right. It's like found the same. It's like on paper it looks like we had a really bad year, and it's like you know, uh, probably the expectation was going to be like one yeah, people or, expected one or two you to do well, right? You know I mean? and, like, and it's good to have that expectation. You want that up to the expectation. You want to be held up to that standard. But um, you kind of have to go back to it and look at the numbers and just be like, hey, look, we've been doing we've been doing some good things. There was a couple of hiccups this year for sure, but um, for me, I'm so excited to have Shaq coming in and uh, have a speed guy to train with again. You know, losing losing. So last year was kind of tough for me personally, just because my two training partners are definitely a little bit more strength oriented. Um, but we, I mean, we signed a stud class. We got Isaac York, and Brandon Kidder, and then Shaquille Walker, and uh, we just. It's, we're, we're on the upswing, and I, th I think we got to figure it out. I think we're gonna, I think we're gonna come back and be resilient, and come back in 2017, just bigger and stronger, and, uh, and do some big things. Katie's still tearing it up. Just came back in here in Monaco, so um, the fitness is there, and it's, it's just we're just gonna have to regroup. For sure. And then, like the other side, a guy like Charles Jock wasn't running well. Runs sneaks out of both rounds, and he's an Olympian. Like, there's no fairness in it, right? Or there's no. I don't really know. I mean. He capitalized on a really good right. opportunity. He went out and did what he had to do on the day. Uh, he didn't get thrown off by the waterfall star. He earned his spot. It's not. It's not like a mistake that he's on the team. And he's he's a 144 guy who's been on the world championships team before. He's an NCAA champ. Like you talk about talent, that just doesn't go away. Like nope. Charles Jackson. Nope. So. The waterfall start it seemed like everybody was against it, but yeah. they did it. What? Is there any feedback or on that? That's tough. I mean, I think the hardest part about the whole weekend was just having to. Right because as athletes you prepare for a race and you kind of run through the scenarios you you mentally frame how the race is going to go you kind of envision it you, know, you, you do some visualization and to have to just change 
in this situation so many times. I mean, not sure if we're going to have eight or not in the final, not sure with the protest. We didn't find out about the waterfall until we got to the track to warm up. Really? Uh, so we had no idea that that was going to be... I, I, I went to bed and I didn't think there was any way that there was going to be any other scenario where Craig and Haroon is the slowest time queue we're going to be out in lane eight sharing lane. I, I just didn't even think right. anything else was a possibility. I mean, you, that's it's just rough. That's high school. That's like... Yeah, have you guys followed up with him and tried to make sure this doesn't happen again? Or I mean, I've had this talk with Eric. I've had this talk with other people. And like, from what I understand, the... We have, I mean, you look at Monaco. They put 11 people. They put 11 right. people and they double them up in lanes. Like that's that's IWF rules. That's that's sort of and why USATF and Olympic trials yeah. doesn't match up with like the highest level of support of what we do about lane assignments. It's, and it's just unfortunate for a guy like even like Eric. He's starting 20 meters behind out in lane five. You put the six guys randomly that like to get out fast on the inside alley. It's just gonna be chaos. I mean, you like right. It just, I, I can't believe it. I, we had six coaches protesting during warm up to get it changed, and you know, between having nine guys in there and having that, it was, it was definitely like you had to reframe. You had to think about it differently. You had to. It, it was just a different race than event. Yeah. Um, it, it, it's tough. It was, it was kind of hard to, kind of hard to deal with. But I, I, I think it's ridiculous. I think it's absolutely ridiculous. I've never been in a race since high school that we started a waterfall start for 800, especially two alleys with six and three. Like it's, I think it was actually one of the stupidest things. Yeah. Thank everyone agrees with you. Well, thank you.